Okay, guys uh, out there. Hey, listen, everybody. I really need to do this video for you guys. Um, this is just a cut to the chase video. Um, I don't want to make it long. I, I want to make it really short. But I also need to give you enough information so that you fully understand. I mean, the Lord has put it on my heart to make sure that you know the truth. Okay, now here's the thing. This resurrect I'll call it this, you know, Passover season, resurrection season. I don't like using the word Easter. We all know it has pagan roots. But this particular season has really shown me some stuff uh, that's going on with a lot of people, a lot of families, a lot of people that are naming Christ. I'm going to cut to the chase. Okay, there is only one Christ, and if you don't have Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, you don't have anything. And if you think uh, you're going to be okay and you're not on the rock and you don't even know what the rock is, then you're going to be in for a horrible surprise. Now, I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to make, you know, what I mean by that is I'm not going to pat people on the back and say, oh, you're going to be okay. You're not going to be okay. You will not be okay. Here's the thing. I have people, you know, friends of mine that, you know, they're talking about their mom, their dad, their husband, their daughter, their, their children. Oh, yeah, they're a Christian. I'm like, really? Well, how come they don't know the truth? How come they can't see the obviousness of the truth? And what that means is if I show somebody an image of, uh, let's say, the virgin and I turn it upside down, it's a dead sheep. And they're like, uh, uh, that, whatever, that's not a dead sheep. Let me tell you what Jesus said in John 9, John chapter 9. I'll go there very quickly. I'm going to show it to you very quickly. I'm going to open up a new window because I don't want to lose my place. And I'm just going to cut to the chase. Just, this is it. This is where the rubber meets the road. I love you in Christ. I do. I hope you get this. I mean, this is quintessential. You must understand. This video you should watch to the very end. I don't care if you throw rotten tomatoes at me. Do what you will. Because I'm here to tell you the truth. I was saved in a very specific manner in order to be able to parlay this information, this to everybody. And now, this, it is so laser focused, it is unarguable. So, I'm going to just use the scriptures. Okay, John, chapter 9. Let's go to it. Jesus tells a man that was blind from birth. And Jesus passed by and saw a man which was blind from his birth. I'm just going to cut to the chase. Jesus heals the man. The Pharisees are pissed because they love their religion like most of these, quote, would-be Christians that say they're Christians, but they don't know the truth. And I'm going to cut to the chase. So, after this this healing of the man and then going before the Pharisees and the Pharisees grilling the guy and he's saying well how do you not this guy has to be from God because who can heal someone that's blind from birth if God's not with him and so then he shows up you know and he's dealing with the Pharisees and the Pharisees of course they're rude just like the religious folks of today the would-be Christians those people that say they're Christians you're not a Christian unless you're on the rock I love you in Christ you're not a Christian unless you are on the rock and I'm going to show you what the rock is and I'm going to prove it using the scriptures and I'm going to show you a very supernatural gift and if you want to argue with it that's fine because you can tell the one that sent me that he's wrong I don't care what you say to me I'm just delivering a message I'm a messenger it's not my opinion this is not my opinion this is not research this is a spiritual revelation gift of the recognition of Christ, period. So all these opinions that come across YouTube, I could care less. People that think they know something and they know nothing, absolutely nothing. So let's look at what Jesus said. He heals a man that's been blind from birth. And then he's talking to him, and he says, And Jesus heard that they had cast him out, because once you get saved, that you will be rejected by everybody. And when he had found him, he said, 
dost thou believe in the Son of God? And he said unto them, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Now remember, he hasn't seen him. And Jesus said, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that is talking with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and, I, and he worshipped him. So Jesus heals a guy. He's blind from birth, just like all of y'all, just like I was. I could not see before I got saved what people were drawing images of dead sheep. They would draw a picture of me and put a dead sheep on my head and give me a picture. How random is that? I couldn't see the dead sheep till after I got saved. Watch. Jesus said, for judgment, I am. Look how he even said his name. For judgment, for judgment, I am. It's the name of God, people. I am come into this world that they which, which see not might see. Just like before I got saved. I couldn't see that when somebody drew an image of a dead sheep and and a picture of me. I was wondering, why are people drawing pictures of me? Why would somebody come hand me a picture that they drew of me? It's like crazy. I'm like, that's weird. wonder why they're handing me a, a picture that they drew of me. I couldn't see the dead sheep till after I was saved. By the way, I'll go get those images for you in just a minute. Jesus said, for judgment, I am come to this world that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees that were with them heard these words, and they said unto him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, like you couldn't see, if you were like legally blind, like you're feeling your way around with a stick, if you had no visual perception whatsoever, Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Period. So if you say you can see, but you can't really see, that is a clear indication that your sin has not been cleansed because you say you see, but you can't see. Therefore, your sin remains. What is he talking about? Well, let me give you an example of what he's talking about, okay? I'm going to go through the scriptures very quickly. Pay attention. Matthew 16. This is who the Messiah is and who he is in his church. He tells you right here. He says, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Okay? He's asking, Who do people say that I am? And the reason he did this is to show you that you cannot find out who he is from people. You have to go to God. Watch. And they said unto him, Some say thou art John the Baptist. Eh. Some say thou art Elias. Eh. Some say that, others say Jeremiah's. Eh. Some say one of the prophets. Eh. Everybody's wrong. Then he said unto them, Who do you? This is the most important question for everyone that claims the name of Christ. If you're claiming the name of Christ and you don't know this, you are not a Christian. I don't care what you believe. This is what the Word of God says, and He gave me a spiritual gift that proves it, and I'm not going to back down because this is what I've been called to do. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. So Peter recognized the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, Barjona, means son of Jonah. It's very significant that he called him son of Jonah. I'll show you why in a little while. For flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. 
So the recognition of the Christ only came from God the Father, not from people. People cannot tell you who he is. Only God can tell you who the real Jesus is. Then he said, pay attention. Pay attention. I say unto thee that thou art Peter. The word is Petros. It means little rock. And upon this rock, look right here in yellow, see it? And upon this rock, that word is Petra. It means mass of rock, like foundation, because Jesus is the foundation. And upon this Petra, I will build my church. So if you're not on that Petra, you are not in Jesus' church. I don't care what you say, that is the word of God. Do you even know what the Petra is? And upon this Petra, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I, see, I, I, I will give unto thee, Peter, Petros, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Well, let's look it up. Here we go. I say unto thee that thou art Peter. It says Petros. I'll click on it. Here it is. Petros. A piece of rock. I say unto thee that thou art Petros. And upon this rock, look at the word uh, compared to it. One is G4074. This one is G4073. I'm going to click on it, and it's going to trade places. Upon this rock, let's see what it is. Petra, G4073. Remember that number. Write it down right now. Upon this rock, it means mass of rock. Upon this rock, Petra, I will build my, it says, of me, I, me, mine, own, my, my church. Look at the word church. It means a calling out. Those that have been called out. That's what the church means. And that's what I'm trying to get done here. I'm trying to call you out of the world, out of the darkness, because the entire world is darkness. And I can show it to you all day long. I can show you the darkness. I can make videos every single day. But it's redundant. Pay attention. Ecclesia means those that are called out. Congregation. Assembly. It is those that are called out. So no matter what, according to the word of God, upon this Petra, no matter what, there it is, upon this Petra, I will build my church. If anyone wants to argue with that, that's fine. There's no reason to ever come to this channel again, ever, because I'm going to show you what that rock is. I'm going to prove to you what the rock is. I'm sick of people thinking they're Christians and they don't even know what the rock is and they're not on the rock, but they're saying, oh, well, my mom's a Christian, but she can't see any of this stuff. Well, Jesus said, hey, I've come to give sight to the blind and to show those that think they see that they are blind. And then the religious folks said, oh, are you saying we're blind? And Jesus said, you know what? If you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty. But your guilt remains because you claim you can see. I'm sorry I'm fired up, but I'm going to drive this home. We're going to cut to the chase. Enough. Okay, so now, here we go. Upon this rock, I will build my church. That's what Jesus said. Okay. Petra, let me open up another, another window. Let's open it up. Let's do it together. You can watch me click every single button. Okay, here we go. First Peter. Let's see, I've got to, got to move this over. Let's see. First Peter 2. I got this thing in the way. I'm going to have to pause it. 
Okay, here we go. I'm going to do it this way. I've already shown you this. Upon this rock, I will build my church, my church, my calling out upon this rock, Petra. Okay, let's go. Let's change this. Let's go to First Peter. Here we go. Oh, I'm having trouble accessing First Peter. I'm going to have to move this whole thing over. Just give me a sec. Okay, so here we go. First Peter 2. Here we go. Okay, laying aside all malice and all guile, all hypocrisies. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If you have tasted, the Lord is gracious. To whom coming as a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. So Jesus is this living stone that we've come to. You also as living stones. So whoever's going to come to Jesus has to be a living stone. You have to be alive. You have to be made alive. Watch. You are being built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Wherefore it is contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone. There it is. That's who Jesus is. He is the chief cornerstone, elect and precious, right? He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but to them which are disobedient, the stone rejected by the builders, the same is made the head of the corner. Now look at this verse 8, and you better dissect this, and you better get it right. He is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient. These are people that think they know the word of God. It is not the mindless, godless, coke-snorting, hooker-chasing, drug-dealing, El Chapo partiers. These are the religious people. They stumble at the word. Being disobedient, wherefore they were also appointed. Let's break it down. Here we go. Let's look at it. Okay. First Peter. Chapter 2. Here we go. Stick, stay tuned, folks, because I am adamant. I'm not going to let this go. You either get this or you're not going anywhere. You're not going to heaven. Unless you know who Jesus is, unless you recognize him as the Messiah, and there's only one way to recognize him. One way. And it's what the devil's trying to hide from all of you. And it's what I, it's the gift I was given. It's the reason I was born. It's the reason I had the sunglass company. It's the reason I was a skydiver. And it's the reason my name means what it means. So pay attention. This is it. Here you go. By the way, this is the tagline for my sun goss company, just oddly enough, out of the darkness and into the light, with glad eyewear. Now, watch this. To you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But to them which are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. He's the chief cornerstone. He is a stone of stumbling. Look, stone of stumbling. What does that say? Apostasy. Let's make sure. What does that say? Proscoma. Occasion of apostasy. So, Jesus is a stone of stumbling. And look, what did he say in Matthew 16? You better be on the rock if you're going to be in my church. There is the same word. I told you to write it down. G4073. Let's look at it. Petra. It means mass of rock. So, he is a stone of, of stumbling for those that are apostates, and he is the rock of offense. Look at it. It says, a trap, a stick, a bent sapling that is a snare. Does anybody know what a bent sapling is that is a snare? Let's look it up. Let's just do it together, okay? Here we go. Let's open a new window. Okay, let's do Google. Google. Let's do images. We'll look it up together. Google images. Bent sapling. Snare. Enter. There you go. 
It's a trap that turns everything upside down. That is what a bent sapling is. There's one. Let's see. Here's a bent sapling. Here's a bent sapling. Here's a bent sapling. Here's a bent sapling. It's a snare. What does a snare do? A snare turns everything upside down because you get caught in it. It's a trap. Okay, you ready to finish this? Okay, we agree that a bent sapling forms a trap that's called a snare and that that exact thing is written in 1 Peter 2. It says, he is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, doesn't it? A rock of offense. What does it say a rock of offense is? It says, of the Petra. Let's look at it one more time. And the rock, there it is. Petra, Jesus said, upon this Petra, I will build my church. There it is, Petra, upon this Petra, I will build my church. And he is the Petra of offense. Let's look at the word offense again. A rock of offense. What is it? Scandalin, a trapped stick, a bent sapling that is a snare which turns everything upside down. Now I'm going to slam it home with a supernatural gift. And if you want to argue with this, I don't care. Argue. You're just going to end up in the pit. Oh my gosh. I'm so frustrated, folks. I love you in Christ, but the people that don't get this, I owe it to you to be like this for you. Because if I sit there and pat you on the back and let you leave your little comments like you're going to be okay, you're not going to be okay. Here you go. Here's the truth. Okay, watch this. I'm going to use pictures. Okay, Jesus has died. He's been resurrected. He's on the shore. Peter sees him. He jumps out of the boat. He swims to Jesus. Open up John 21. Here it is. And after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed himself. And here all these guys are that are fishing. And there they see Jesus. And Peter dies off the boat. Peter! Who, didn't he tell Peter in Matthew 16? What did he tell Peter? Here, let's look at Matthew 16. What did he tell Peter? Matthew 16. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. He told Peter, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Peter. That's what he told him. Now look, here we are back in John 21. So Peter dies off the boat. He swims over to Jesus. Watch what happens. Now this is the third time that Jesus had showed himself to the disciples after he was risen from the dead. What did Peter call, what did Jesus call Peter back there in Matthew 16? What was it? What did he name him? I just showed you. What did he name him? He said, hey, Simon, son of Jonas, I'm going to call you Petros which means little rock. Peter was the first building stone on the new temple, and I'm going to prove it. Peter was the first building stone on the new temple. Jesus is the foundation. Peter was going to get the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and he would become the first building stone. Watch this. This is the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was risen from the dead. Before he died, he said, Hey, Simon, son of Jonas, I'm going to name you Petros. And upon this Petra, massive rock, I'm going to build my church. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, why did he call him son of Jonas? He already named him Petros. Here's the reason. He hadn't become the Petros yet because he hadn't been crucified upside down yet. Watch. Jesus said to him, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou more than me, me more than these? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. And then Jesus said to Peter, what did he say? What did he say? Feed my sheep. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple sheep. Okay, here's a spiritual gift. Supernatural gift the Lord gave me the night I got saved. Okay, here's a picture of a dead sheep. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my drawing tool, and I'm going to slam this home. And uh, anyone wants to argue it, argue with the Lord. Okay, here we go. Here's a sheep. You know what? Let me see if it'll enlarge. Make it even larger for you. Here's a sheep. There's a sheep's eye right there. 
the black spot right there. Here's the other eye on the far side of the head. There's the other eye. Here's the nostril right here. There's where the nostril is there. Here's a line in the mouth there and there. And here's the tongue sticking out of the sheep's mouth. There's the top of the head of the sheep going down to the ear, going to the other ear. Here's the edge of the face of the sheep. Here's the hair going around the sheep. And the there's the outline of the sheep's hair. Okay, there's the sheep. Okay, now let me tell you, how did I show you the sheep? Well, you see this image of the Virgin right here? I took this image of the Virgin and I turned it upside down. That's how I showed you the sheep. Let's go and see what Jesus said. Okay, so Jesus says, hey, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? He says, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. Then he says, and feed my lambs. Let's look at a picture of a sheep. There's a sheep. Okay. Okay, let's go back to John 21. A second time he said, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? And he said, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. And then Jesus said to him, then feed my sheep. Here, let me show you another sheep, okay? Let's just look at another sheep. I'll show you a hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. It's 1,300 years before Christ. Here's the image of Nefertiti. If you haven't seen the Just a Messenger series, go watch it. If you haven't seen Kingdom Divided, go watch it. Here's an image of Nefertiti, okay? Let me see if I can enlarge this. There you go. Here, let me draw in the eye. Okay, here's the eye of Nefertiti right here. This part's the eye right there. You can see it coming down the nose right there. Okay, and there's her mouth open. Done, and that's supposed to be her ear. These actually end up making devil horns. Go look at the video I did. I'm going to clear that real quick. Let me show you a dead sheep with its tongue sticking out. Okay, here we go. Here's an image of a dead sheep. There's a sheep's eye right there. Okay, here's the top of the sheep's head right here going down to the sheep's nose right here the sheep's mouth is open right here the tongue is sticking out of the mouth going under the sheep's neck here's a teardrop coming out of the eye of the sheep and here's the ear of the sheep right here and here's the back of the neck of the sheep so one way it's the queen the other way, it's a dead sheep. Well, how did I show you the dead sheep? What did I have to do in order for you to see the dead sheep? I had to turn the image of Nefertiti upside down. What did Jesus say? Upon this rock, I will build my church. What is he? He's the rock of a fence. A bent sapling that is a snare. Waiting for this to go back, trying to pause it, uh, erase, erase. Let me try and go back. He's a bent sapling that is a snare. Okay, so I got stuck on that. The screen got stuck. He is a bent sapling that is a snare. He is the rock of offense. He is the Petra of offense. He's a trap that turns everything upside down. He told Peter, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Okay, feed my sheep. Let's look at a sheep. There's a sheep. How do you get to see the sheep? You turn Nefertiti upside down. What is a snare? It's a trap that turns everything upside down. So the indwelling spirit of Jesus Christ is in me because I'm on the rock, because I know to turn everything upside down. If you want to see the truth. And if you want you know the truth, you know we were bred with another race of beings, and we have a right side up, upside down paradigm that runs this world. Here we go again. Watch. Here we go. Second time, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Then feed my sheep. A third time he said, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Now watch, folks. Here it comes. He said, yes, you know I love you, Lord. Then Jesus said, then feed my sheep. And then after all that, he says, he's, 
He told Peter, when you were younger, you went where you wanted. But when you're older, you'll stretch out your hands and others will take you where you don't want to go. Jesus told this to Peter to signify what kind of death he should die to glorify God. That's the Bible right there, folks. There it is. That's the Bible right there. That's it. Peter died upside down. So Jesus was crucified right side up. And Peter was crucified upside down. Let me show you a little example of what that looks like. You see that? That's an image of what Jesus would look like on the cross. He is right side up, and Peter is upside down. If you have a key, you put it in a keyhole, and you turn the key upside down, and the door opens, and you go in. If you don't have the key, how did you get in the kingdom of heaven? If you're not on the rock, how did you get in Jesus' church? If you don't know this, how are you in? I'm not going to placate anybody. This is life or death, people. This is eternity in hell or eternity in heaven. And I'm not here to make friends. Look at it. There's an image of Christ on the cross. Would you like me to slam this home for you? Okay, then I will. Let's look at the Acts of Peter. I'm going to do it with you live. Okay, here's the Acts of Peter. A lot of people, well, it's not in the Bible. Well, you know what is in the Bible? Jesus said, upon this rock, I will found my church. What rock? The Petra of offense. The Petra, the rock that is a bent sapling that is a snare. I just showed it to you. He just told Peter, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And by the way, your death is going to glorify God. Let's take one more look at it. Here's the image of Jesus on the cross. And here's Peter on the cross. Jesus represents all that is good and right and honorable. And we as humans and this fallen race, we represent that which is evil upside down. So here you go. Let's look at the Acts of Peter. It's an apocryphal book. A lot of people, oh, it's not in the Bible. Well, guess what? At the Council of Nicaea, when they put together the Bible, it was to unite Christianity and paganism. There was a lot of stuff left out of the Bible. But I just showed you in the Bible I proved it. But now I'm going to go to the Acts of Peter. Watch. I'm going to click on it in front of you. The Acts of Peter. I'm going to scroll down here to verse 37 and 38 and 39. And I owe it to every human being to do this. Because if you go look at my testimony, you go listen to my testimony on YouTube. The Lord made me put it on YouTube. I didn't want to. I knew I would be tortured because of my testimony by the haters, by the false Christians, by the phonies, by the religious folks. I knew I would take flack for it. But the Lord told me, you have to, Jonathan. And I did as he said. Now I know why. Because it proves itself out. And I'm going to prove it to you. Watch. So Peter comes to the cross. He's approaching the cross right here. Go read it for yourself. Read what he says. Down here he says, But now it is time for thee, Peter, to deliver up thy body unto them that take it. Receive it then, ye unto whom it belongeth. Because the flesh belongs to the devil. It is the devil's. He has legal title deed to your flesh. And he says, I beseech you, the executioners, crucify me thus with my head downwards and not otherwise. You see this? Crucify me with my head downwards and not otherwise. Did you know this is the document that we know Peter was crucified upside down? This is where it comes from. This is the document. This is how we know that Peter was crucified upside down. Now go watch my video I did on the Catholic Church. Go look at the Vatican, the big keyhole. Peter, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The Catholics know it's Satan's church. It's a big keyhole with serpent skin over it. So Peter says, crucify me thus with my head downwards and not otherwise. And the reason wherefore I will tell unto them that hear. And when they had hanged Peter in the manner he desired, he began to say, you men unto whom it belongeth to hear. 
If you don't get this, it's because it doesn't belong to you. I love you in Christ, but I'm sorry. If you don't get it, it does not belong to you. It only belongs to those who were intended to hear it. Just like it says in Revelation, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. You men unto whom it belongeth to hear, hearken to that which I shall declare you unto you at this special time as I hang here. Learn ye the mystery of all nature and the beginning of all things. Think of Genesis for what it was. For the first man whose race I bear in mine appearance, or the race of whom I bear the likeness, fell. Ever wonder why I'm always falling out of the sky upside down and all the point of purchase ads from vampire sunglasses? Go watch my videos. So he said, for the first man whose race I bear in my appearance, or whom I bear the likeness, fell, was born. So he fell from heaven, was born, head downwards. Just like Peter's crucified right now. And he showed forth a manner of birth such as was not heretofore. Who was the very first birth on planet Earth? It was Cain. Cain was the first child born. Okay, Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Jews, he said, you're of your father the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he's a, he's a liar and the father of it. Was Cain a liar and a murderer? Yes, he was. He's a child of the devil. So you got a problem with the serpent having sex with Cain? Then you got a problem with the whole thing. Here it is. He showed forth the manner of birth as was not here before. For I bear in my appearance the likeness. I bear in my appearance or the race of whom I bear the likeness fell from heaven, was born head downwards, and showed forth a manner of birth as was not here before. For it was dead, just like everybody on planet Earth. Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead, having no motion. He then being pulled down, who cast his first state down upon the earth, established his whole disposition of all things, being hanged up in the image of creation, wherein he made the, listen closely, he made the things of the right hand into the things of the left, and the things of the left hand into the things of the right hand. And he changed about all marks of their nature, so that he thought that those things that were not fair to be fair, and those things that were in truth evil to be good. If you don't get this part, you don't get the scriptures, you don't get Matthew 17, Matthew 16, you don't get John 21, you don't get the Bible at all. And here it is. Concerning which the Lord saith in a mystery, unless you make the things of the right hand as those of the left, and those of the left as those of the right, and those above as those below, and those before as those behind, you shall not have knowledge of the kingdom. Let me go and show you a picture real quick. What did Jesus say to Peter? Peter, your death is going to glorify God. What is Peter saying right here? He's hung upside down. And he says, concerning which the Lord saith in a mystery, unless you make the things of the right hand as those of the left, and those of the left as those of the right, look, look, look. Christ on the cross. Here, here is the right hand. And unless you make those of the right as those of the left, and those of the left as those of the right, you will have no knowledge of the kingdom, and those that are above as those below. Do you get it? It's a snare. It's the most profound thing on the planet, folks. Okay, now let's go back to my personal testimony. Because I'm sick of the people that think they know the scriptures. I told you the night I got saved that the Lord told me to read the tags in my clothing. I was standing in this hotel room with my girlfriend and a 
blanket of energy descended upon me, and I was like, what is this? And I hear this voice say, Jonathan, read the tags and the clothes you're carrying. And I'm like, I look at Lou, and I go, Lou, it's my girlfriend. It's a girl. And I said, Lou, some voice is telling me to read the tags and the clothes I'm carrying. And I threw the shirt down on the bed, and it said 100% nylon. 100% nylon. And I read it out loud, and I said like this, 100% nylon? What does that mean? And I and I hear, I hear the Lord say, turn it upside down. And I said, 100% no lying. N-O-L-Y-N. Like a Texan would say, no lying. 100% no lying. I was like, and then my body just went and started buzzing. I was looking for the real Jesus, people. I had prayed this prayer, Lord, I just want to know who the real Jesus is. Everyone's got their own version of Jesus. They can't all be right. Please tell me who the real Jesus was. That was a week or so before I got saved. Here, let me show you a picture of the word no line. Nylon. Okay, here it is. Nylon. Uh, okay, here, watch this. Just like Peter said. Unless you make the things of the left, the things of the right. And those above as those below, you'll have no knowledge of the kingdom. Do you understand? You're looking at the key to the kingdom of heaven. Peter was the key. He had the keys. Jesus is the Petra. He's the foundation that every one of us that is born again gets put on. And if you're not turned upside down, you're not going anywhere. You're not saved. You're not in Jesus' church. You can believe whatever you want. But you're not in what he said, my church. You have to be on the Petra. One more time. What is the Petra? Here it is. Look at it. He is a rock. There it is. The Petra of offense. There it is. A stick, a trap, a bent sapling that is a snare. Ready? There's the key to the kingdom of heaven. Did I make my point? I don't care what any of these religious fanatic fruitcakes think that come write ch comments on this channel that think they're right they're demonically they they're everyone that unless you're saved you're demonic period you are unless you've been saved you are run by the prince of the power of the air period that's why jesus said you must be born again unless you're born again you'll never see the kingdom of heaven I can show you this stuff all day long. I have a never-ending supply of showing you this stuff. Why do you think Madonna, why do you think she's upside down in this picture? Why do you think, huh? Oh, Madonna, oh, well, let's see. Madonna, like the virgin. Why do you think the O and the D intersect right here and make a vesica Pisces? Why? I don't know how that ticked. I can show you this stuff all day long. You better know this, people. If you're not on this rock, I love you in Christ. But if you're not on the rock, you're not going to heaven. And I hate to tell you this. Many, read the word for yourself. Many, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, so they think they're talking to God. Have we not prophesied in thy name? These are not the drug-dealing, hooker-chasing partiers. These are people that think they know God. They're saying, hey, haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we cast out devils in your name? Haven't we done many wonderful works in your name? He's going to say, I will profess to them, depart from me. I never knew you that work iniquity.
You better watch this very closely. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine, the word sayings is logos, look it up, and doeth them, the word doeth means to do and understand, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. Let's go look up that word and see if it's the same thing. Okay, here we go. Matthew 7, everyone that thinks they know God, I guess you better be on the rock, huh? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Haven't we done all these wonderful works in your name? And they'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. You that work iniquity, unrighteousness. Therefore, whosoever heareth these, I told you it was Logos. Logos, Jesus is the Logos. In the beginning, there was the Word, the Logos, and the Logos was with God. So if you don't know the Word when you read it, and you don't recognize the truth of it, you don't know God. Whoever hears these Logos of mine, there it is, and do it them, it says to make, to do, and to understand. I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon the Petra. There it is. The Petra. I mean, I'm in shock. So many people think they know Christ, but you, they don't know that the whole world is hybridized. Right side up, upside down. There's a good you and a bad you. One right side up, one upside down. You got to be made whole before you go anywhere. Now, I'm sorry I had to just growl that out, but I'm going to grind it out for you if I have to. I mean, I don't care if people throw rocks at me. Bring it. This is the truth. Why do you think the night I got saved? How crazy is that? Listen, how crazy is it that the night I got saved? Go listen to my testimony. I told everybody, yeah. The Lord told me to read the tags and the clothes I was carrying. That's a pretty hard testimony to sit there and tell people, but it's the truth. And I saw the words 100% nylon. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And the Lord says, turn it upside down. And I turn it upside down. 100% no line. Get it? The 100% truth. Then the second thing he told me was the pyramid is your enemy. Go look at my testimony. It's been on YouTube for years. It's been on YouTube for years. You want to see the truth? Watch this. You know, you know, a lot of people think Bono's Illuminati. You're crazy. Because he put his eye over his, I think, because he knows the truth. Look. One. Huh. Let's see. Oh, you mean like that? Unless you make the things of the left, the things of the right. Let me reduce this in size. and Let me try and go back and redo this image. There you go. Read the Acts of Peter one more time while you're looking at this. I'll just quote it. I will quote it off the top of my head. Learn ye the mystery of all things. In which the Lord saith in a mystery, unless you make the things of the left as the things of the right. So here's the here's the right, here's the left right here. And now it's been made the right. And the things of the right is the things of the left. So there is an R here's right here. And when you turn it upside down, the R goes over here. Unless you make the things of the left as the things of the right. Unless you make those above as those below. You will have no knowledge of the kingdom of heaven. That was the very first thing God Almighty communicated to Jonathan Cleck. He said he gave me the key to the kingdom of heaven in his very first communication. 100% no lion. I wanted to know the truth, and boy, did he show it to me.
So, I would suggest that everybody dissect this, tear it apart, do the best you can do to figure it out. Okay, so, I told everybody, go look at my personal testimony. The very first thing the Lord God told me the night I got saved was, read the tags in your shirt. I read the words, 100% nylon. Go look at my personal testimony. I just proved it using the Bible, people. Just proved it. Proved it. It's not my knowledge. It's the knowledge from God. He wants you to know, too. But all those people that think you know something when you know nothing, God have mercy on you. Go to God. That's how, how come Peter had the keys to the kingdom of heaven. See, nylon, 100% nylon, does that make any sense? A uh, no. That's why I said, what does that mean, Lord? 100% nylon. And the Lord said, turn it upside down. And I said, 100% no lion. No line. And I was like, and then my body just lit up. I was like, oh my Lord, what is this? And I heard the Lord say, you may not tell 1% lie, Jonathan. You must be 100% truthful to receive what I have for you. Here, let me show you a picture of it. There's a picture of the word nylon. What it acts of Peter. Unless you make the things of the right, the things of the left, and the things of the left, the things of the right. And those above is those below. You will have no knowledge of the kingdom of heaven. And I'm trying to help everyone I can at great cost. And believe me when I tell you, it has been great cost. Like most of you will never, ever know what it's cost. I just don't whine about it. Here's the key to the kingdom of heaven. For some reason, this thing's trying not to open in the middle of the screen. I'll move it over. There it is. Jesus on the cross. Peter on the cross. What's light is dark. What's dark is light. What's above becomes out which is below. Right becomes left and left becomes right. Go take this video and pick it apart. Go read the scriptures. Now, if you want to believe someone's a Christian and they don't know this, go ahead, believe it. You're, they're going straight to hell. Unless you make the things of the left as the things of the right, and those of the right as those of the left, and those above as those below, you will have no knowledge of the kingdom of heaven. None. That's why Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. That's why I can show you dead sheep. Every time I turn an image of the virgin upside, when I turn images of the virgin upside down, it's a dead sheep. Get it? Turn it upside down. The key to the kingdom of heaven. So when I turn the virgin upside down, it's a dead sheep. I'm trying to feed the sheep. But there's a lot of foolish sheep out there that are hard-headed that think they know something and they know nothing, nothing. And I'm burnt out on it. I'll just say it like it is. Here, let me show you another one. Okay, let's apply the key to the kingdom of heaven. I'll show you a pyramid from Guatemala. Here's a pyramid from Guatemala. You see it? You see this right here? This is supposed to be a king. See the king? He's wearing some ridiculous headdress. There's his eye, his eye, his nose, his mouth. This is, he's wearing some ridiculous headdress. Let me show you what it really is. Peter, feed my sheep. By the way, Peter, you're going to die upside down. So let's, let's turn that thing upside down. 
Okay, here it is. I just turned that thing I showed you upside down. See the sheep? It's got the devil superimposed on the... There's a sheep's eye. There's a sheep's other eye. There's a nostril. There's a nostril. There's a mouth. This is the snoot right here. Going to eye. Here's the ears going out right here. There's the ears. The ears also become a male penis. Male reproductive system. Here's the sheep's hair right here. There's the sheep's. So we'll going up the other ear like this. Right there. It's also cumulatively the female reproductive system. You don't think I can see this? These people that want to tell me what my spiritual gift is all about, you're insane. I love you in Christ, but you're, you've lost your minds. You know nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know nothing. Absolutely nothing. If you don't know this, you know nothing. You don't know Jesus, you know nothing. You're completely and utterly and pathetically deceived by your master. And you think you're right. Why do you think Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So there's your sheep. There's a devil right on top of the sheep. There's a devil's eye, eye. There's his nose. There's his mouth. He's got these curly Q horns right here. There's a demon right above him. There's an eye, eye, mouth. It's all in videos I've done. Go look. Go look at the videos I've done. Go look at the Kingdom Divided video. Go look at the pictures. I walked into Starbucks and some guy's is sticking his pointing his finger, going, winking at me. And I said, "Hey, Chris, I'll bet you a million dollars that guy draws a picture of me with a dead sheep on my face," and he did. So please don't sit there and pontificate to me about your weird form of Christianity that you think you know. You know nothing. Nothing. Unless you know the things of the right are the things of the left, and those of the left are those of the right, and those above is those below, you will have no knowledge of the kingdom of heaven, and you do not know the Jesus of the Bible. Okay, did I make my point? in the story. Now, if you don't like this, don't ever come to this channel again. And for those of you that understand, God bless you. I'm sorry, it required this. It, it actually just required me doing this. Now, I'm going to hang up. I'm going to post this video while it's rendering. I'm going to go pray, and I'm going to say, Lord, is it okay? This is what's called righteous indignation. I'm pissed. I'm sick of Satan and his little fruitcake minions. Okay? They're all going into the pit. Jesus is coming. This is the modern sign of Jonas. Don't believe me? Really? Here, let me show you. Jesus was in the belly of the earth for three days, wasn't he? Let's go to Matthew 16. Okay, you know what? I'm going to leave John 21 up. Let's go to Matthew 16. I'll prove it. I'm just going to keep going. Matthew 16. There it is. Here it comes. Ready? And the Pharisees and with the Sadducees, they came and they desired a sign that he would show them a sign from heaven. And Jesus said, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. When it is, more, when it is morning, it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the time. They're standing right there in front of the Messiah. He says, a wicked and adulterous generation that seeks out their sign. There shall be no sign given but the sign of the prophet, what? Jonas. Jonas. What was that? Oh, well, Jonas was in the belly of the fish for three days. And Jesus was in the belly of the earth for three days. And Jesus knew that this generation that I'm in would show up one day and that he would give this gift to his servants and that they would know what the sign of Jonas was. It's the number three, right? Three days in the belly? Three days in the belly? Huh. Why is he calling Peter, Petros, Simon, son of Jonas? Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Here, let me show you a picture. There is one right there. The only way I could show that to you is I had to turn it upside down. 
because I have the key to the kingdom of heaven. Okay, let's go and look at another one. A second time, Simon, son of Jonas. Okay, let's go back to Matthew uh, 16. Uh, there will be no sign given but the sign of Jonas. There it is right there. I'll make it yellow so it matches color. There will be no sign given but the sign of Jonas. For three days he was in the belly of the fish. For three days Jesus was in the belly of the earth. Let's go back to John 21. Simon, son of Jonas, don't forget, he already named him Petros back in Matthew 16 before he was crucified. Now he's been risen from the dead, and he's telling the son of Jonas because this is a sign of Jonas. And a third time, oh my gosh, there's that number three again. Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Yes, I love you, Lord. Then feed my sheep. Turn it upside down. 100% nylon. 100% no lion. I'm telling you the 100% truth. And if you don't get it, you know why? Because you're one of these guys. You're one of these guys. Jesus said, for judgment I am coming to the world, that they which see not might see. Let me show an example of that. There you go. Here's an example of it. That they which see not might see. Let me give you an example of what he might be talking about there. Here, here's an example. That those that see not, I couldn't see this before I got saved. Once I got saved, I could see it was actually this. It's not the virgin. It's a dead sheep. It represents Eve, by the way. So, if you don't see this, but you say you see, then your guilt remains. Here, I'll prove it. Jesus said, for judgment I am coming to the world, that they which see not, which is like me before I got saved, might see. Yay! I got saved and I can see. And they which see might be made blind, like all the people that come to this channel and they leave comments thinking they know something when they know zero. And some of the Pharisees that were with him heard these words, and they said, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, and you better listen closely, he said, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, We see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. So your sin is still there. And I don't care what you say. Here, let me show you a picture. Now I said, I'm going to go pray, and I'm going to say, Lord, I hope my righteous indignation is okay in your sight. And if it is, I will let this video fly, only if the Lord says it's okay. But I'm sick and tired of these people that think they're Christians, and they know nothing. There. Thanks for letting me get that out. I feel better. I'm serious. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Now go watch all the videos I did on the Twin Towers, the Federal Building, the Pentagon. How did I do it? I folded the bills one way and I turned them upside down. And then you see the image. Uh, let me show you another scripture before I hang up just for everybody. Okay? Let me just show you one more scripture just to slam it home. And then I'll just tell you a couple off the top of my head. Okay, here. Let's see. Isaiah. 29. Isaiah 29. Okay, you ready? For all you satanic, uh, just entrenched in religion believers who I feel sorry for, woe unto them who seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Surely your turning the things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Right there. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be regarded as the work of God. Let's have a look at that. Okay, there you go. There's a virgin. Turn it upside down. Ah, that's who's there. Those are their plans. What are their plans? To kill sheep. Psalm 146.9, the Lord loveth the righteous, but the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. So for those of y'all that think you know something and you know nothing, you know nothing. Till you make the things of the right, the things of the left, 
and the things of the left as those of the right, and those above as those below, you will have no knowledge of the kingdom. Why do you think Peter's death glorified God, people? He had the key to the kingdom of heaven. By the way, the night I got saved, I was given the key to David, the key of David, the key to the kingdom of heaven, the very first communication with the Lord God. He gave it to me. Go back and vet me. Go check my testimony. Go make sure what I'm telling you is true. Go back and watch my first videos, Just a Messenger series. Go watch it. And then come back and leave your comment, and then I'll block you. This is for those who can see. And those that are humble enough to go to God and say, Look, I saw this guy, Jonathan Kleck. He seemed really pissed. Because I am. I'm really pissed. I've had enough. And say, hey, is this true? Take it to God. Don't go to man. Go to God. Don't go to some preacher that's got a PhD like he knows something. Jesus didn't call PhDs. He didn't call people that were educated PhDs. He called fishermen. He called people that were ordinary people. He called people that the society hated tax collectors. All right, I'm going to go pray, and if the Lord lets me, this video is coming. And it's the only way you'll ever see this video is if the Lord said, let it go, post it. That's my righteous indignation. And I hope I didn't offend the Lord, but I'm sorry, I can't stand it anymore. I owe it to you to tell the truth, even if people hate me. That's okay. Jesus said they hated me, they'll hate you. All right, let's do this.